In bottom-up design in Creole Parametric, you would start by designing your individual parts and then assemble them together into sub-assemblies, assemble the sub-assemblies into higher level sub-assemblies, and continue that process upward until you get to the top level assembly. In top-down design, you would start with your top level assembly, and then I might start off by creating my skeleton model. For example, click the Create button and then choose Skeleton Model and click OK. And in this case here, I'm going to browse to a model that I already have in my computer's memory just to bring in some geometry. And here you can see my OML or outer mold line already in the assembly. But in this particular case, I'm going to start out using middle out design. So let's delete this skeleton out of here. And in middle out design, you typically use that when you have a bunch of commercial off the shelf or COTS components or some components that your company has already designed. And you're going to place those typically electronic components first and then design your product around it. And in this case, I'm going to create a sub-assembly and this one is going to be for my power and avionics and sensors normally I would do this as three separate sub-assemblies but for simplicity I am going to create them all in the same one and click OK and we'll locate that using the default constraint and hit the check mark to make sure I'm using the right references, I'm going to open up this sub-assembly in its own separate window. And at this point, I would start the process of assembling my various components. Let me start off by assembling one of them. Let's click the Assemble button and go to my Working Directory. And we'll start off with our flight computer. And for this one, wow, let's turn off our coordinate system display. and. Let's use the, oops, there we go. Let's assemble this plane to this surface over here. And then for simplicity, let's just pick, say, ASM front and this surface and this surface and that one over here. Normally I would center it, but this is good for the first component. And I'll hit the check mark, and that way I have one of my commercial off-the-shelf components. Now what I'm going to do is put in a little edit here, and I'm going to come back when I have a whole bunch more of the COTS components assembled. And again, I'm just going to use the same techniques as I used for this particular one. And I'm back. I've got all my COTS components assembled for my power avionics sensors subassembly. At this point, I will create my structural subassembly. Let's call it UAV Structure. Click the OK button. And I'll use my same default template. Let's locate it using the default constraint and hit the check mark. Now I will activate my new subassembly, create my skeleton model. And I'll leave the default name and I'll use my standard start part. And if I expand the subassembly, there I have my skeleton and I will activate the skeleton and I'm going to create a shrink wrap feature. Let's grab all solid surfaces as opposed to outer shell. That's just my preference. No, I'm not going to exclude any internal components. I'll go to the subset button and the structure subassembly itself is going to be included in the shrink wrap by default. So I'm going to click on the drop down list and choose to ignore it. Then click the Open button, and everything else should be good. Options, I'm going to leave it automatic update, so that way it'll add any additional components that are added to the assembly. Uh, from the References tab, I'm not going to grab any other additional components or datums. And let's call it Shrink Wrap UAV to indicate what it comes from, and hit the check mark. The shrink wrap has been created. Let's open up the skeleton in its own separate window. So now I have all the necessary reference geometry and I can start designing 
my essentially my OML my vehicle around the placement of these different components and then I would proceed back to the assembly and I would create the different structural components in here as well as also create a cabling subassembly and the cabling subassembly would reference the necessary COTS components as well as the structural members that I would use for routing my wires and cables. And so that in a nutshell is how you use the middle out design technique which uses a little bit of bottom up design and a little bit of top down design. Let me know if this design technique would be useful to you in the comments section. I hope you enjoyed this video. For more information, please visit www.creowindchill.com. If you learned something from this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like this video, please click the subscribe button to be informed when new videos are uploaded. Thank you very much.